So you're a part of the 1% in America. You've got a business that's making you money, and you've got American employees doing the work for you. But ironically, even though you're the one giving them a job, and you're paying them the highest salaries in the world, these employees that you enrich are completely ungrateful. You give them ridiculous things like vacation days, sick days, paid leave. You gotta pay for payroll taxes, healthcare, benefits. And yet they don't even work hard. They do the bare minimum, they lie and pretend to be sick. Most of them are just gonna quit after a year for another job to advance their career. And if they do stick around, even though they're doing the bare minimum, they're guaranteed to storm into your office at the end of the year and demand a raise, even though they know full well they don't deserve it. And guess what? If you don't fire them in the right way or you call them by the wrong pronoun, they are gonna sue you. You've been served. You've been served. You've been served. American employees are simply not worth the trouble. You gotta find a way to replace these ungrateful SOBs with a cheaper alternative. If we're gonna turn this company around, we gotta start cutting the crust off this sandwich. After all, they're just gonna blow the salary you pay them anyways. Why not just skip all the trouble and just not pay them in the first place? You're fired! Get the out of here! Go on, pack your up and get out of here! Now you may be wondering, but Jake, how am I supposed to do that? I need these ungrateful SOBs. What am I supposed to do? Replace them with cheap labor from India or the Philippines? We're talking high-level roles like creatives, account executives, client success managers, bookkeepers. There's no way an Indian or a Filipino can do this work. They can't even speak English! Calm down, calm down, everyone. <sighs> Take a deep breath. Because what if I told you you could? What if I told you you could replace pretty much every single American employee with dirt cheap labor from poor countries? What if I told you these workers would not only be dirt cheap, but they would actually be grateful for you? That they would actually show you some respect? And what if I told you that these workers could do just as good of a job as your American employees, if not better, while speaking great English, with some even speaking perfect English with no accents? See, everyone has accepted that outsourcing hard labor to China is much better. You can easily train some rice paddy villagers to assemble one piece of an iPhone with just a few minutes of training. But knowledge jobs? That seems like a far stretch. But think about it. Most poor countries have internet. Most poor countries teach English in school because they know that if they want to make money, they better know a little English. And all these poor countries have the same access to the same free tutorials on every skill imaginable just like you and I have. Except who's more motivated? Some Filipino dude in his late 20s or early 30s that's about to get married and needs to feed his entire extended family, so he's devouring every single little thing he can find on how to get good at social media management? Or Amanda over there from East Village that, like, just wants to inspire people on TikTok? Even though she's never needed to work for a single thing in her life? Yeah, I'll take the Filipino for 80-90% to 90 less money every single day of the week. The biggest corporations in the world all exploit cheap labor for a reason. Because it works. But if it makes you feel better, we can call it a much more polite sounding term, a term like globalization. Stay dangerous and this is how to exploit cheap labor, legally. Okay, aspiring exploiter, the first step in your journey is to set aside your prejudices about people from poor countries. And you gotta accept that practically any American can be replaced. In just the Philippines alone, Google employs IT service providers, software developers, analytical consultants, and a whole lot more. While United Health Group outsources its consulting, customer service, engineering, and project management. Even Wells Fargo has outsourced workers in highly skilled knowledge jobs like fraud investigation, financial accounting, and payroll consulting. And these are just three examples. Plenty of Fortune 500 companies are doing this exact same thing all over the world. So think about it this way, if Wells Fargo is able to train a Filipino on something as important as fraud investigation, if Google, the most powerful software company in the world, is able to outsource their software development to a Filipino, then maybe these people from these poor countries are much more capable than you may have thought. Maybe you can replace Timmy with someone just as good and cheaper. That is step number one. And now that we have that out of the way, step number two is to understand just how good and motivated these poor workers can be. Put yourself in the shoes of someone in India or the Philippines. You grew up dirt poor, you've always had to work hard, in your culture it's normal to get married early and have kids, it's also normal to live with your extended family and support them, I mean it's not like your parents have a 401k or something, you learn English in school or university, you got some degree at your local university, but the local jobs in your country absolutely suck. They'll work you to the bone, you'll barely make enough money to support yourself, much less your entire family, and there's no room for advancement, and that's if you can find a job. In many of these countries, even if you have a degree, many people still find themselves working a hard labor job because there are just no good jobs available. Take an accountant in India, for example. For the most part, accounting is very standardized. It's hard to screw up if you're trained, unless you're actively trying to commit fraud. 
This means that someone who graduated as an accountant in India probably has close to the exact same skills and knowledge as someone who graduated as an accountant in America. But if you were to employ an accountant in India full time, it would only cost around $7,200 a year. At $7,200 a year, they're only making around $3.60 an hour. Still really good money for them compared to the jobs they can get. But think about this. What if you did something super crazy and paid them $5 an hour? Heck, maybe even $7 an hour. Almost double the average salary, you generous capitalist. Do you think he's going to be insanely grateful? Do you think he's going to work extra hard to make sure he's doing everything to your standards and that you're happy with him? Yes, all that for not even minimum wage in America. Now compare that to an American that you pay $30 an hour for something. The person in America isn't going to do a good job for $30 an hour. They've got student debt, mortgages, car payments, a dream to chase, remember? All they're going to think is, oh, $30 an hour? That cheap bastard. And they'll just half-ass the job until they find a better one. So now that you understand where these people are coming from, now it's time to move on to step number three, understanding the math. Let's say you have a business that sells something for $100. Maybe you're an agency and you're selling a website design or an email marketing campaign, for example. And let's say it takes your American employee three hours to fulfill the service. You pay this employee $25 an hour, so overall it costs you $75 in expenses. To keep it simple, let's assume there's no other expenses. That leaves you with a profit of $25 or a 25% profit margin. Only getting to keep $25 for every $100 you bring in isn't great, but hey, most businesses with American employees are like that, so you're not alone. But let's say you replace that expensive American employee with someone from a cheap country like India, where the going rate for this position is just $5 an hour. Now I can already hear you say, but Jake, I may be only paying them $5 an hour, but what if they're not as good as my American employee? What if they're slower, less efficient? Okay, fair enough. Let's assume that your new Indian worker is less efficient than your American employee. So instead of it taking them three hours to fulfill the service, it takes them a little longer to get acquainted. Maybe they just need to move a little slower, or maybe they're literally just logging more hours than they're actually working. So it takes them more like six hours to complete the task. Most business owners would just stop right there and say, this person sucks, they're ripping me off, fired. But hold on a minute. Because even if they're only half as efficient as your American worker, let's do the math. Six hours at $5 an hour equals just $30. That's 60% less money than what it costs your American employee. Meaning instead of making a measly $25, you are now profiting a whopping $70. That's right, just by outsourcing to a cheaper country, even though now you're technically twice as inefficient, you still went from a bad profit margin of just 25% to an insane 70% profit margin. So who cares if it takes this guy six hours instead of three? Just hire another one to help him out. Now you have two workers fulfilling two orders, bringing in $200 in revenue for just $60 in expenses. $60, which is still lower than paying your one American employee. But now you're fulfilling more orders, taking in more customers, and growing your company much, much faster. And this is just a theoretical example. Let's go back to the accountant, for example. Again, an accountant trained in India versus the US is gonna have mostly the same skill. The only difference is employing the accountant in India full time costs around just $7,200 a year, while employing an American accountant is gonna set you back at least $60,000 a year, not including all the other costs that we mentioned earlier. Meaning that by going with the Indian accountant, you get to reduce your payroll by 88% for the exact same service. Okay, so you're sold. You know they have the skill, you know they have the motivation, and the math makes sense. So now it's time to fire all these lazy Americans. But wait, where do you even find these people in the first place? There are plenty of websites where you can find cheap remote workers, but Upwork is probably the best place to start, not affiliated. On Upwork, you can find remote workers for every possible position from every corner of the world. It's as simple as posting a job post, making sure you're as detailed and enticing as possible with your job post title and description, you can choose which countries you want to target, and then boom, the applications will start rolling in. Then it's a matter of reviewing the applicants, shortlisting them, interviewing the ones you like, testing them out, and hopefully hiring one you like. The only problem you're going to run into is that you're going to have to shift through a lot of bad applicants. That's because although everything we talked about earlier about these people being motivated and skilled is true, there's still going to be a ton of bad applicants on these websites. That's because platforms like Upwork have a very low barrier for entry. Think about it, anyone can pirate Photoshop, watch a few YouTube tutorials, and then call themselves a graphic designer. Anyone can lie about their experience to say they're great at sales, finance, or operations. They can plagiarize their portfolio. And you'll only find out once it's too late, and you've already wasted all this time reviewing applicants, hiring them, training them, etc. 
and then you'll have to start the process all over again. So if you're a business owner and you want to avoid dealing with all this nonsense, so you know you can run your actual business, then you might want to check out Paired. Paired is a staffing agency that specializes in recruiting this exact type of cheap overseas talent for you. They take care of all the recruiting, vetting, and interviewing so you can focus on what you do best while saving you up to 90% on payroll costs. All you gotta do is go to paired.so slash jake with the link below, fill out the contact form, and then you'll get on an intro call with them. On that call, they'll learn your exact hiring needs, you'll get assigned your very own hiring manager, and then they will get to work finding you the best talent possible. Their strict selection process weeds out 99.9% .9 of the job seekers out there, which means you will never have to waste any time on anyone with bad communication skills, bad English, or their inefficiency. They'll spend the next two weeks narrowing down approximately 500 applicants to the top two or three, and after those two weeks, they'll introduce you to your new overseas talent. And after that, they're all yours. These are your employees, you pay them directly, you have full control over them, there is no platform, task systems, or communication channels needed. Paired is perfect for you if you're already running a successful business, you already have some employees, but you want really good overseas talent that is dirt cheap, whether you need 5 employees or 50. But Paired is not for you if you're a solopreneur looking to make your first hire. So if that sounds like you, scroll down and click the link below to go to paired.so slash jake to get started now. As one founder said, we used Pair to find us a support engineer. They found us an overqualified candidate at about 25% of the cost of hiring in the US. The whole process was super easy and saved us a ton of time. I can't recommend them enough. Or take Jason for example, the founder of Doe Lashes. I've hired from a number of recruiting agencies who charged me thousands of dollars and delivered a fraction of what Pair did for me. The team was professional, responsive, and attentive to my business needs. I've thoroughly enjoyed working with my new talent from Paired. So click the card on the screen or scroll down and click the link below to go to paired.so jake to get started now. Thanks to Paired for sponsoring this video.